Welcome to a very special episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am your host, Vasavi. What I want to introduce is a 30-minute training that I did for an event that I spoke at on the topic of being an influencer. And the topic is, what are you influencing, really? You know, using the power of your voice to connect with depth on social media, right? How do we use our voice and our humanity to connect with other people? Really, what are we influencing? actually, right? So I'm going to be getting into that. Uh, if you've ever thought about being a coach, being an influencer yourself, uh, having a podcast, a YouTube channel, and you just don't even know where to begin, you, you kind of turned off by the whole thing. I want to break it down, make it a little easy for you. Uh, maybe start to shift your relationship around really using your platforms and your voice for good and to be of service. So uh, you're listening to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello. My name is Vasavi Kumar. I am so honored and privileged to be here today to be sharing with you on my topic, what are you influencing? Using the power of your voice to connect with depth on social media. So here's the thing, right? With video content on the rise, all the information that we are currently consuming, not only we are, but our target audience, everyone's consuming content through video, right? So video content is on the rise. And so it's so important now more than ever that you express your realist self, your truest self with authenticity through the camera to connect with your audience. I know these days the the term influencer can maybe be a little triggering. It's almost like, well, what am I even doing? Like, how do you know if you're an influencer? How do I know if I have what it takes to influence? Let me just say this right out the gate. If you're using social media, if you're on social social media, if you have access to video, if you have access to a place where you can write and it can be seen, and if you have, you're an influencer, you have the ability to influence people every single day. We're in the business of influencing people every single day. Just think about in your home life. Think about at work. Think about with your in-laws, with your partner. We're always trying to use our power to influence others to get what we want. It may not be so blatantly apparent, but we have the power to influence and we're constantly using our power to get people to do what we want them to do. Now, this can be kind of feeling a little sticky icky. It can be like, oh, that feels sleazy. That feels slimy. And I think that's what social media has done, right? It's it's kind of made us see these sides of people that were like, oh, I don't ever want to be that way. Like, I don't want to be that person who's just talking about uh, fashion, or I don't want to just be that person that's just talking about food. I want people to connect with me and my story. And I want to build a relationship. So here's the thing, whether you want to be the next big food influencer or fashion influencer or news influencer or legal commentator or whatever it is else it is, whatever it is that you're using social media for, you can do that. And you don't have to lose sight of yourself. That is really what I want to help you walk away with today. Okay. So three things how to get crystal clear on your point of influence, okay? Number two, the subtle self-talk shifts because let's be real, a lot of us have stuff up here that is talking to us in a way that is not kind, is not compassionate, it is not encouraging. So I wanna be teaching you some subtle self-talk shifts to move through that fear, imposter syndrome, and emotional perfectionism, which I'm gonna get into. And number three, action steps that I'm going to give you to take off camera so you can become more real and be more confident on camera. Okay. So you're ready. Let's go. When it comes to being influential and having an influence over your audience to think differently, feel differently, um, talk differently to themselves. Maybe you have better habits, whatever your services that you're offering, or maybe you have a product that you think would be great for your audience. It all boils down to the why, okay? So a lot of times people focus a lot more on their services and their products. And this is why you need to buy my product. This is why, you know, I'm amazing to work with. This is what I can help you with. And while that's great and also relevant, the number one thing that I think people overlook is really getting clear on your point of influence. So you got to get clear on your point of influence. And here's how you do that. Answer this question. What are your values? 
And you can ask yourself, what are my values? What do I value in this world more than anything? Right? For me, it's connection, it's community, it's authenticity, it's self-expression, it's loyalty. I have many things that I value, but I have like my core values that I anchor into. Um, community, connection, and authentic self-expression, definitely top three. And so in everything that you put out into the world, whether it is a written piece, whether it's a photograph, whether it's a caption that you're writing, whether it's a video that you're shooting, everything has to boil back to those core values, right? Because when you are operating, speaking, connecting with from your values, when you are rooted in your values, guess what's going to happen? You're going to attract people who are aligned with similar values as you, and you will repel people who are not attracted to the same values as you because they have different values and that's okay. Your job is not to make everyone like you. In fact, not everyone is going to like you and that's okay because in order for you to be liked by everybody, you're going to have to abandon yourself, right? Because in order for us to be likable and be liked by everybody, you're gonna have to not be true to yourself because you're gonna to try to win people over. And if you have a tendency to people please, you might find yourself kind of sweeping stuff under the rug and be like, oh, it's okay. Just say yes when you really mean no. When we have these platforms and we wanna grow, we stop ourselves because we're like, well, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. What do I even say? What do people even wanna hear? What, I'm an influencer, what does that mean? So it all boils down to who you are. This is something that I love saying. I say this in every interview. I say this to all my clients. I say strategy without a sense of self is pointless. You got to get really clear on your sense of self and you get clear on your sense of self by knowing your core values. What matters to you? A really good way to, it, it maybe if you've never thought about this before and that's okay, it's never too late. One thing to really look at is when you're on social media, who are you drawn to? What types of content are you drawn to? What kind of influencers are you drawn to? More often than not, it's probably because you share similar values, the way they speak, maybe the way they show up, their personality. If there's something that you really resonate with, great. That means it's inside of you. So you don't have to look too far outside of you to know what your core values are. You can identify what your core values are by looking at the content that you consume. Look at what you're drawn to. Look at what you're repelled by. What if you're like, I don't, that doesn't resonate with me. Great. That actually tells you where your values are. If you don't resonate with something, that doesn't mean that that person is bad or you're weird or whatever. It just means there's a misalignment and that's okay. Right. So look at the content that you're consuming. Look at where you spend your money. You can tell a lot about what you value in life by what you spend your money on. I love to spend my money on beautiful experiences and travel and self-care and gifts for others. It, it's all very much aligned with who I am as a person. So the very first thing, and, and this is why events like this summit that we're in right now is so important because I think oftentimes we get very caught up in the strategy of things. But like I said, and I, I really wanna drill this home, strategy without a sense of self is pointless. So to get crystal clear on your point of influence, I want you to take a moment you can either pause this video or you can do this afterwards. Ask yourself, what matters the most to me? What feels like a hell yes? What's a hell yes in my life? It's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Number three, what do I value? What, what, what do I value more than anything? And feel free to list it all out. You can also ask yourself, which accounts do I admire? Who do I currently admire? Who's doing what I want to be doing? And, and who are they being, right? So less focus on the doing and more focus on the energy. Who are you drawn to? Because like I said, more often than not, if you're drawn to somebody, it's because there's something in there that resonates. And conversely, if you, if someone, if, if you are repelled by somebody and that's okay, it's just because there's not an alignment right now. Who knows? You know, maybe down the road, people change. You can grow. You can outgrow certain beliefs. You know, it's it's fine. But like, where are you at right now? What really, really matters to you? And how do we express that in a way that is 
um, integrative, integrated of, of all the different parts of you, right? Because if you look at the most influential people, right? A lot of them have a lot of numbers and, and, and the blue check and all of that. But think about the people that you're really drawn to. And you're just like, oh, it's probably because you can feel them. You can feel all of them. Like, wow, this is like a whole person. They're showing me all of them. Like I get to be a voyeur in this person's life. Now that may be a lot if you're introverted or shy and you're like, I don't want people to see that much. It's okay. Take baby steps, right? Ultimately, I think for all of us humans, we want to be able to be fully self-expressed and be our full selves no matter where we go. So we don't have to constantly be so fragmented and compartmentalized, right? So getting really clear on your values, using these questions, writing them out, saying it out loud to somebody, talking it out with somebody, it will be very beneficial because when you get clear, you write down your values, you write down what matters to you, and then you say that to somebody else, you'll start to feel that like exchange. You know, when you're just talking to someone and you're in, you're in um, a good flow of conversation, that's the experience that you want to have. That's how you know when you resonate with someone, right? Or even when you're looking at your social media accounts that you're following, right? And it's, there's, a, there's something inside of you that's saying, be more of that, right? So we got to get you to that place. But the first thing that you got to do is get clear on your point of influence and your point of influence is rooted in your values and who you are. So pause this video or make sure you come back to it to answer these questions, write them out, and then you can press play and we can continue forward. So the second point that we're going to be covering is the, the subtle self-talk shifts to move through fear, imposter syndrome, and emotional perfectionism. So let's get into it. This next section of our talk about the subtle self-talk shifts for helping you really move through fear, emotional perfectionism, and imposter syndrome is probably one of my favorite things to talk about. I'm the uh, author of the upcoming book called Say It Out Loud. It will be out in spring of 2023. I'm a firm believer in talking out loud to yourself. I think a lot of times we're, you know, we're, you know, as women, we struggle with finding our voices, using our voices. And so while I love journaling, I also really love the power of using your voice and saying things out loud to help you with your self-talk, right? Self-talk, when you keep it in long enough, it starts to become the narrative of your life. You start to believe it, the stuff that's up here all the time. And so when you take it and you say it out loud, you then can transcend above your ego viewpoint. So I know when it comes to getting on social media, when it comes to posting videos, maybe stepping into the coach role, expert role, or maybe you're a blogger and you want, you want to start being more personal. Maybe you want to start sharing about your family. Three things always come up. Okay. Three things. So these are the three things that I want to cover in this section here. Your fear of what will people think? Emotional perfectionism. Uh, I can't, ref I can't show this side of me. Oh, this is too much for people, right? This is too much. Like we can only show certain types of emotions. We can't show others because we're, we, we've been taught that certain emotions are okay to display and certain emotions are not. So I'm going to give you a subtle self-talk shift for that. Okay. And then the third thing is imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome is very real. I just went through my own little like imposter syndrome just two weeks ago about something that is I'm stepping into a version of myself that feels like new. And so I have a really fun way for you to transform your self-talk when it comes to imposter syndrome. So let's get into fear. I'm going to use my dad's advice here. What's the thing that we fear? We fear what other people will think about us. Okay. So my dad's given me a really good piece of advice and I want to impart that with you today. And I'm going to share one added piece to that. My dad always said to me, don't worry about what other people think. After all, it's just a thought in their head and you cannot control people's thoughts. I mean, you can try in order for you to have control over the way somebody perceives you, it is going to require you to have to be a certain way so you can give them a certain perception. While that may be, be beneficial temporarily, long run, that will have a toll on your self-esteem. Because if you're always pretending to be somebody else or wearing different masks or not being your full self, so as to control how other people perceive you, you're going to end up becoming a stranger to yourself. And we don't want that, right? If you want to really step into your own influencer archetype role that you want to play, and you really want to get out there and build your community and serve the masses, and impact people, right? Whatever that looks like for you, 
the best way to go about doing that is to be yourself because it may work for a little bit for you to be different types of people, right? Like, oh, maybe I'll get approval now, or I don't want to, you know, I'm afraid of what you're going to think. So I'm going to be this way, but it's not good for your mental health. And I, I, I can't come on here and actually say to you like, oh, do all this strategy. It's like, because it really is a strategy of yourself and how you want to show up and the tactical strategy follows that, right? So what I'm really helping you with is develop that solid foundation upon which your strategies will be built, okay? Your your influencer strategy, your marketing strategy, your content strategy, email marketing, all that, okay? That's one thing my father always used to say, don't worry about what other people think. After all, it's just a thought in their head. The other thing that I want to say, and I shared this with the client the other day, you know, it's okay to care about what other people think, but you got to care more about what you think of yourself right? We are so concerned about other people's opinions of us, but when's the last time we stopped and asked what's our opinion of ourself, right? So taking the focus from out there inwards, maybe your fear right now is that you care a lot what other people think and that stops you from really getting out there, or maybe you already have a platform and you want to get take it to another level, but what's holding you back is, ooh, this is too much, like, right? Like, what will people think? perfect, right? Doesn't matter what stage you're in. What you got to get really, really clear on is your opinion of yourself. Do you like you? Do you like who you are? Do you like who you are becoming, right? Share that with others. And that leads me into the next, which is emotional perfectionism. Especially as women, we are groomed to only show like happy or we can be damsel and that's okay. But God, if we're clear, if we're direct, we're considered aggressive. Or if we have boundaries, oh, like, oh, she's so mean and she's so cold. It's like, so, you know, we've been groomed to be a certain way. And so emotional perfectionism is, you know, allowing certain emotions to be okay to be seen, right? Like happiness and joy, but like maybe you have other other emotions, which you do because you're a human. Maybe you're stressed out because you're a mom and you're juggling kids and a business or you got stuff going on and you're like afraid to share that with your audience because you're like, ooh, this is too much for my audience. What I want to say is that what your audience wants more than anything is to see the human you. And if somebody doesn't like seeing the human you, like all the parts of you, then they're not meant for you, right? Because think about the people that we feel the most comfortable and safe with. It's the people in our lives that we feel that we can be ourselves around and they're not going to judge us right? That's what we're all after. So give yourself permission to be seen, to be okay with, you know what, I'm stressed out. And maybe someone in my audience could really benefit from hearing this, right? So here's a subtle self-talk shift. Okay. So anytime you want to share something and you're like, oh, this is too much for my audience, or I don't know if I should be talking about this topic. This is what I, I want you to tell yourself. Okay. There might be one person out there who may benefit from me sharing this. If I can just help one person, even from sharing this or expressing something or, you know, then that's good enough, right? Because we gotta, we, we gotta start thinking about really what you're after. You're after helping people. You want to help people. You want to make people's lives better. You want to influence them through your products and your services to feel better, live better, have better habits, better mindset, love relationships, all the things, right? When you, when you get into that mindset of someone can benefit from hearing this, you'll, you'll think less about, oh, is this good enough? Am I too much? Then you won't make it about you anymore. When you make it about, I'm in the business of helping other people, I want to use my journey to help other people. I know that my story can save a person's life. When you go into it with that mindset, okay, it no longer matters anymore what other people think. Or, oh, is this too much? Or is this, you're in the business of helping other people. That is the mindset, okay? That is the mindset. So when we get to then the next part, which is um, imposter syndrome, this is something like I, I shared before, it feels like it never goes away. I thought, you know, two, I remember a year and a half ago, I wrote a Instagram post and I said, I don't have imposter syndrome anymore. And I, I look back on that and I'm like, how arrogant of me, because I just experienced imposter syndrome two weeks ago. And so it was a big lesson for me. And that's why I want to share it. Um, it never goes away. It doesn't ever feel like it goes away. I have a big opportunity that's coming up. And I remember when I got the email, I was like, why did they pick me? Like, who the hell am I? Right. So it, in that moment, wow. But I have a self-talk shift 
that I want to share with you. When I thought about imposter syndrome in this way, it changed everything. So I wrote this down. Imposter syndrome is leaving the self you've been pretending to be behind. I'm going to read that again. Leaving the self you've been pretending to be behind. So think about it. You're here. You have an opportunity or something, maybe a, a new love in your life or anything. Just think about it. It could be anything, right? Maybe you have the opportunity to publish a blog and it has a, on a huge platform, or maybe you've been asked to be interviewed or do an IG live with someone. And you're like, oh my God, who am I to do this? And maybe it's like your first time doing a video and you're here, right? You're, you're, you're here. You want to be that person that's on interviews and giving talks and being on IG lives and doing the things and getting out there and speaking on stages. So you've now been given this opportunity, let's just say, and all of a sudden you're like, wait, I don't deserve to be here. I'm not good enough to be here. And then you start to psych yourself out and you tell yourself, oh my God, these thoughts are real. I don't deserve to be here. What were people thinking? Right. And so that stops you, right? That that definitely stops you from being of service because if you're in the business of influencing others and marketing and serving and, and doing all the things to help people, when you have that thought, it immediately is going to make you shrink and be like, no, I, I can't be seen. It's not safe for me to be seen. It's not safe for me to be seen. So just remember in those moments when you're here and you have an opportunity that maybe will move you forward and move you forward, right? You're getting closer to the person that you want to be. When that imposter syndrome get, c comes up and you're like, I don't deserve to be here, you can rest assured and you can say to yourself, oh, I'm just leaving behind the self that I've been pretending to be. And my body just hasn't caught up to it yet, right? Because you've been here with this mindset, with this belief system, and now you're stepping into this version that you've always dreamt of and had the vision of. And you're like, wait, I don't believe you're like in a purgatory almost. You're like, I don't relate to this version of me, but I want this, but I don't know. That's what it is. So, wow, right? If you're feeling imposter syndrome, wow, that means you are moving closer to who you're meant to be. That is a great thing. So all these subtle self-talk shifts, I've constructed them in a way for you to really start to open up to the possibility rather than be shrouded in fear, which is very natural. It's very human. As human beings, we have a deep desire to be seen. We also have a very deep fear of being seen, right? Because with that comes judgment. And so I'm preparing you internally. I'm preparing you internally because when you are internally solid, Nothing from out there can, pen uh, can can penetrate you, right? So we want to be internally solid. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to get into are the action steps that you can take off camera to become more real on camera. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I want to be sharing some action steps that you can be taking off camera to feel more confident on camera. OK, and why this is important to you being able to influence others, because like I stated at the very beginning of this, is that we are moving into a society where we want to see, we want to experience, we want to be in people's lives, we want to feel real human emotion. OK, and so you're here listening to this because something inside of you knows that you have a message that you want to share. You have a story, you have fun content, you're funny. Maybe you want, you know, you, 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 you want to let other people know that they're not alone and you want to connect with others. I believe the two things that we can do in this lifetime is to capitalize. Number one, capitalize our gifts, our message, our story, the things that we've been through capitalize. Number two, learn how to monetize it. OK, and so when you can do both, it's beautiful because you're not only able to help others, but you're also able to sustain yourself um, because it's a transaction, right? Like you are you are letting people in. People want what you have to buy because they connect with you. It's a beautiful exchange. It's so beautiful when you are able to integrate all the parts of yourself and to share that with other people. And if you have a product or a service that can help them and have that come from an aligned place, your core values, and then you get paid for that. That's a, that's a beautiful place to be, right? Because you are making money being you, making money being you, and you have tapped into your zones of genius where you really shine and you are of service and you help so many people when you are in that zone, right? So I want to give you some actions that you can take if you struggle with getting on camera. Um, but maybe you have a very deep desire to be able to teach like this, just like I'm doing. I'm sitting in front of my camera and I'm ta just talking uh, and I have my points, but it's like it's able to flow out of me because 
when you are aligned with the topics that you want to teach and the things that resonate with you, it just flows out of you. Okay. So I want you to get to that point. So here are some of the things that I do and I work with on my clients. They're very simple. Okay. So don't disregard them because they're simple. Oftentimes we very often we overcomplicate things that we need to do to build our own confidence, but I want to keep it really simple. So with my clients, what I have everyone do is stand in front of a mirror. Okay. This is going to prep you for when you get on camera. This is going to prep you when you're on stage talking to people. This is going to prep you if you're leading a zoom training or, or live virtual training or anything like that, right? Stand in front of the mirror. That's number one. Okay. Every single day, multiple times a day. Number two, talk to yourself. Now you might be wondering, what am I talking to myself about? Start with how was your day today? Ask yourself in the mirror. So let's pretend this is the mirror. Vasavi, how was your day today? And just notice yourself, look at yourself, start getting comfortable looking at your reflection and, and look back and be like, oh, I'm okay today. You know, or I, I've had a rough day. Here's the thing. When you look at yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself a question, you can't lie to yourself because you're looking at yourself. This is helpful for you when you get on camera, because the number one thing that people don't like is to look at themselves. And they're like, I don't like the way I look. I don't like the sound of my voice. But if you get into the practice off camera to look at yourself in the mirror, then when you're holding up your phone, recording a video, or you're getting on camera and looking into a camera and talking, you don't even have an audience. It becomes easier. Why? Because you've been practicing looking at yourself in the mirror and you've been practicing dialoguing with yourself in the mirror, right? And this is important because you want to connect with others, okay? But if your barrier is that it is hard for you to even look at yourself, guess what we got to do? We got to get you to get comfortable looking at yourself. And you do that by looking in the mirror, having a conversation with yourself. Start there. Then what I would want to graduate you towards is, let's say you wanted to shoot a piece of content, okay? Let's say you wanted to help busy moms. I'm going to keep it kind of simple stuff that we've seen out in the internet, you know, helping busy moms, um, you know, prioritize their self-care, right? So what I would do is I would write out my key points, okay? If I was, if you were a client, I would have you write out your key points and then I would have you really just allow yourself to flow within those points. Like have a, have a post-it note with some bullet points, keep it up on your mirror and just practice talking to yourself. Like today, I'm going to be sharing with you the three tips. Sorry, the, the, today I'm, bleh, that will happen. It's okay. Today, I'm going to share with you the three tips to balance your self-care, even if you feel like you have no time. Okay. And whatever that is, but we're getting you in the habit of speaking and looking at yourself because you can easily translate that to camera. If it's just practice. It's just practice. I'm able to do this because I've done this thousands of times, thousands of times. I've been doing this for 11 years, right? So it's just practice and it doesn't have to take 11 years. It's just, you just need consistency and you got to have fun with it. You got to have fun with it. You got to fall in love with your, your hand gestures or your facial expressions. Like you got to start falling in love with that reflection of yours, right? So I would have you do that. I would have you take a, uh, a post-it note with your bullet points and then just riff. Allow yourself to just flow and just, how would I talk about this topic? What you're doing is exercising your voice. You're starting to see like, oh, which voice do I like using? Do I want to be more direct? Do I want to be more singy-songy? You get to have fun with your delivery. And then what I would have you do, if we were working together, let's just say, I would have us get on a Zoom and have you practice what you want to say. And what I'm always looking for and what I want to train you to be able to do, even if we never work together, is to feel the discrepancy, right? Because remember, we talked about imposter syndrome. That's real. It's a real feeling. And so imposter syndrome, if we, if we tie it into this and really feeling the discrepancy, when you look in front of the mirror and you talk, you're going to have lots of different thoughts about yourself. You're going to be like, oh, I shouldn't be saying this. Or maybe you feel that little bit of imposter syndrome. Who am I to be doing this? But the more you do it, the more you do it, you actually have an opportunity to see where you may not be practicing what you're preaching. Okay. So 
the reason why I highly recommend, and that's why this like getting on camera stuff, being influential, it has very little to do with everything on camera. It has everything to do with how are you mentally preparing yourself, emotionally preparing yourself um, to get on camera, right? And these are all confidence building skills that I am teaching you that has nothing to do with lighting hair or makeup, right? Because being an influencer used to be about the grid, the aesthetic, the feed, the photo quality. And while that stuff is beautiful and great, what we really want is authenticity. We want people who are real. We want people who are willing to be honest, share their stuff and not be so shrouded in their mask and in their ego. Like, oh, I don't want you to see me, right? So uh, what I'm teaching you are all the things that you can be doing on your own or with the with the support of a coach or a, a, a community, having some accountability is to really start to help prepare you internally and mindset, right? And actual actions, like talking in front of the mirror, um, writing out what you want to say, practice saying it out loud, just really playing with your voice. As a voiceover artist, I'm an actor and a voiceover artist as well as a communication strategist. I love being able to do different things with my voices to evoke different emotions, right? So have fun with getting on camera, with these exercises that I've given you. We take ourselves very seriously. We take ourselves very seriously. And there's a time and a place for that. But I also think when we allow ourselves to have fun and let our inner child out and play, People want to be around that. We want that energy. It's infectious, right? So work on your energy. Work on feeling good. Work on loving your reflection, liking your reflection, liking who you are as a person. You start sharing that with the world. You start, hey, this is just what, what's going on, right? You're just being, being you. Everything else, like the content strategy and what do I post, it will come, it'll be a lot simpler, for you to figure out what that is. When you start to speak from a place that is so aligned with your authentic self-expression. I wanna say thank you so much for watching this training. I know that you are, you have this vision and this dream inside of you of who you know you can become. And what I want you to know is that that vision was put inside of you because it's meant to be fulfilled by you. And so listen to that calling, listen to that whisper, listen to that nudge that's always said to you, be a little bit more you, show them a little bit more of yourself. It's okay. You know, just there's that little, and I, and I know that you're battling those other, we all have that inside of us, right? And just know that all of it can coexist and you get to choose who you want to become today and who you want to become in the future and work towards that every day. If any of this resonated with you, if you're curious about working with me, I do offer three hour VIP sessions called Confident Communication Strategy. It's, it goes much deeper and it's very customized to you and your communication, your purpose, your platform, the positioning that you want to, how you want to position yourself, really looking at becoming a more authentic storyteller, building those relationships through using your stories, um, creating a platform that is so you right? It is, it is you because you are your best business strategy. Okay. If you're interested in that, please just go to my website at vasavikumar.com, or you can follow me on my Instagram at my name is Vasavi. Reach out to me. Let me know, Vas. I love this talk. I found you through the summit. Uh, I would love to work with you. Um, and yeah, we can get that conversation going. I am here to help. I am here to serve. I hope you have a beautiful day.